everybody, it's Tom Trims with the Fujinet Project, and I wanted to make a quick status update video showing what I'm having to do to get the last 5 to 10% of Fujinet to what I consider to be a well-working state. For most people, the disk functions are working great and they will be sufficient for most uh, Coleco Atom users. But there will be a certain number that want to use the virtual printer functions. So I'm having to spend a significant amount of time trying to make sure that the printer works as expected. If you take a look, you'll see on the right hand side here a listing that is output from uh, the Digital Research Mac Assembler under CPM. And if you look close enough, you will see that occasionally we will have a situation where characters are being dropped. Now, this might not seem like very much of an issue for some of you. Okay, fine, occasionally characters get dropped. But when you try to take and implement something like bidirectional printing, which is used by SmartWriter and AtomCalc, the problem becomes very apparent because those two programs rely not only on the bidirectional behavior uh, that the smart writer can do, but they go out of their way to, to do the absolute minimum amount of effort needed to continually reposition the print head to be in the right place for the next character. What this essentially means is that for Smart Writer, for example, uh, the carriage return only resets the character of uh, the carriage once, after which point it prints forward, gets to the end of the line, then does two vertical tabs, which moves the, moves the carriage up one line, shifts to backwards mode, and continues to print. And this repeats to the entire document. I also forgot to mention that uh, a number of spaces are emitted after the initial carriage return in order to set the required margin. So it's important that the printer be able to reliably receive and interpret all of the control codes to keep everything aligned. Well, what's causing the problem? Well, you'll see the problem in two different ways here. But you'll see that the problem essentially arises because in certain cases, the, uh, the timing between the ask of the atom as to whether or not it's ready and our response being that we are either printing something, in which case it's a non-acknowledgement like here, or it's we're ready to receive the next character, which is the ready character here, is too long. The ideal response time when the, from when the atom takes and sends something to when it expects something is roughly the same length of a single character. It's actually a little bit more than that, you have a bit more play. You can get away with two, uh, eight, 180 microseconds to 200 microseconds. But you want to try and stay in the range of 160 microseconds, which is essentially one character length. And this is possible on the old hardware because the 6801s that control the I.O. for these devices, they're only dealing with one thing their printer. They're dealing with one thing. They're not running a multitasking real-time operating system like what is running on the FujiNet. So lots of things can cause these timing errors, such as uh, a, a, another task taking up more time uh, and preempting more CPU cycles than is usual, which can throw timing off, uh, etc. And this presents another problem here. Normally, if somebody sends a ready, you can simply ignore it and wait for the next one. Or if you know that you're going to take too long between the time that ready is sent and you send a response, 
you can simply ignore it. It'll keep, it'll just go on. But we can't do that here. This was throwing me for a loop for quite some time because I was getting the data, uh, but somehow it just wasn't making it over in one piece. And it had to do with this delay discrepancy here. And it manifests itself in two different ways. Since CPM and uh, Smart Writer and Atom Calc send one character to the printer at a time, uh, this will manifest at a dropped character because the transaction for that printed character will simply fall off. It will stop printing the buffer once uh, once we receive once a timeout is received. But for something else, like for example, using the full 16 characters available for the print buffer, you get a very different issue. You'll notice here that if we print using the print EOS print buffer command, which allows you to send characters to the printer 16 characters at a time, you'll see that we're actually doing pretty well here, but we get cut short and the whole thing stops. This is one single print buffer request and it stops prematurely. Conversely, if we look at, I'll try to find the other one here. You'll see here, much the same thing. If I send 16 characters at a time with a full buffer, you'll notice that there are no dropped characters within the buffer transactions. It's just going. It's sending those characters along. But we drop. We stop. And this is actually the beginning of another print request here, and it stops. And again, this is literally because at certain points, we're not answering the request fast enough. And here you'll see that the request timing is actually marginal. Bam, 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 bam. Just enough, just enough. You'll see the timing is much closer here. It's close enough. Well within, well within timing limits. So the atom receives the NAT from the FujiNet. Says, okay, fine. We'll ask again. We'll ask again. But it's right on the outside. And in this case, it's through printing and waiting for the next character. And we're right on the outside of marginal timing here. Well within timing limits. Let's pull this in a little bit here so we can see. And yeah, I'm actually running this over VNC to my logic analyzer station, which is on the other side of the lab here you'll see that we're right on the edge of allowed timing here. It's enough and it's okay because the atom receives it, doesn't time out yet, and starts to send the next 16 characters. All good there. And we respond in good time so the atom is happy. Here. Again, we're within 160 microseconds, 180 microseconds at worst. So we're we're right in the ballpark. Good to go here. But where is this behavior coming from? Why is it stopping? Well, the answer to that lies in the disassembly of the EOS operating system itself.
We'll pull this over here and we'll open up this right here. Print character in A. Well, first of all, this is, if you send one character at a time, it's real, all it's really doing is putting one character in a target print buffer and then sending it right off to print buffer. Okay, great. So let's look at print buffer. Well, we come through, preserve, register as we can, find the printer, set out the character counter, we check for we check for the end of end of buffer character here, and we just iterate through building the buffer and calling the resulting right character device once we have our buffer and our length. But here is the interesting part right here. Right failed. Is it still printing? 134. Well, 134 decimal doesn't really make much sense to us. And this was a, an artifact of Rich Dreschel's uh, disassembly. These values are in decimal and not hexadecimal for whatever reason. But if we go ahead and do a little conversion with calculator, we'll see that this is hex 86. If we go ahead at this point and look at the 6801 master listing, we'll see a list uh, right in the middle of the master listing where the MAC processing occurs. We'll see a number of operating system equates for different packet types and starting with the error codes that can happen as the result of an AtomNet transaction. 80, 81, ready timeout, 82, 83, 84, 85, and 86. Ready NAC. This is what had this is the error code that whatever is using AtomNet will receive back if it receive if a uh, ready command says no I'm not ready yet. And this is all that we're checking for. This is the only acceptable error code that is checked for uh, it to, to say, okay, the printer is still doing something, we will try again. Otherwise, we'll simply do an error exit with the zero flag set to zero. Here's this error exit, bam, goodbye. And Therein lies the reason for both why characters are getting dropped in single character mode and why print buffer requests are essentially being cut off in the middle of their buffers. Because at different times, the ESP32 is having to process different tasks and for different reasons, it is responding with the ready acknowledgement too late. And unfortunately, we can't use the timeout. We can't use the timeout function here. Say, oh crap, it's taking too long. Because anything other than the ready knack here will simply cause the print routine to bail out. So that's what I'm trying to work through right now. This is, again, this is kind of a little look through in some of the things that I'm having to solve to make uh, this device as reliable as possible. And I'm trying a number of different techniques to try and respond to the different conditions that may arise. In the firmware here, this is very telling because if we actually go back, I'm going to take and revert all my changes up to this point. And the way that I've been able to get to the 99% mark for most things here is to implement a queue which gets filled whenever sends happen. And if there's something in the queue, then we immediately send back the non-acknowledgement. Otherwise, we acknowledge. 
and this is right on the edge of being fast enough. So what I'm having to do at this point is figure out how to make this faster, how to tighten this up and to get another 40 to 60 microseconds worth of time back so that we stay within the margin of error. So with that, I'll go ahead and end the video here, but I wanted to kind of just show you guys what I'm working on and some of the challenges that result in trying to make this thing work well. So until next time, guys, have fun.